What's up, guys? So the Dolphins just released their injury report for week one, and I'm going to go ahead and give you the good news and the bad news for this injury report. Uh, if you want good news first or bad news first, go ahead and check out the chapters below. Let me know what you guys think about that. Uh, if you're anything like me, you want your good news first, so I'm going to give it to you right now. Good news. Waddle and Tyreek, who have been, you know, worrisome with their injuries throughout the offseason and in training camp, are not on the injury report at all through the first two days. And I honestly, as a Waddle fantasy owner, Tyreek fantasy owner, I could not be happier about that. And then, of course, as a Dolphins fan, could not be happier about that. Waddle coming into the season without any lingering injuries is basically what we all wanted because last year he was injured throughout the entire season dealing with various different things and it cost him like he had a good season but it wasn't as good as we thought it was going to be uh, we thought he was going to take another leap forward uh, hopefully he could do that this year also on the good news side Aaron Brewer uh, turns out we actually got a little bit more clarity on his injury we knew it was a hand turned out he broke his hand when we were going against the Buccaneers I believe it was he ended up having hand surgery to fix his broken hand, and he has been limited in practice the past two days. He just said that he is going to play this weekend, so we're going to have a full offensive line healthy for week one, which beautiful thing. Honestly, beautiful thing. Like, And look, I am worried about Brewer a little bit in pass protection, as I would be with Liam Eikenberg as well if he was playing center. But the most important thing, really, is that we have our starting guards playing at their starting guard positions. And really, it's one starting guard because left guard Robert, Robert Jones, he's really the backup for Isaiah Wynn, but he's on the PUP. So this is what the offensive line should look like for at least the first four weeks, barring any other injuries. All right, more good news. Jalen Phillips, he did not participate on Wednesday. On Thursday, he did participate fully throughout the entire practice. Now, Mike McDaniel did hint at possibly limiting his snaps on Sunday. He you know he's he's like, well, you got to think about the circumstances. He's coming off a major Achilles injury. Uh, he this is gonna be his first live game since then. And then you also have to think about you have a game four days later on Thursday Night Football against Buffalo, your biggest rival of all. So you want to have Jalen Phillips. Would you rather have him play 50 and 50 or would you rather have him play like 80 and nothing? Because that's what it's probably going to end up being. And honestly, 50 is a really high number. I don't anticipate him playing even half the snaps. But it's going to be, it's, it's good to see him back on the field. So that's another just, absolutely great thing to see Devon Holland he's been a little banged up he's been a full participant the past two days so that's also great to see a lot of our vet rests that we have and I mean there was a lot of them. we had one two three four five six seven vet rests yesterday that were either limited or did not participate in every single one of them practice fully today I'm gonna go through them real quick Jalen Phillips was Achilles slash vet rest Poyer was thumb slash vet rest. Anthony Walker was his knee slash vet rest. Armstead was vet rest. Clias Campbell was vet rest. Kendall Fuller was vet rest. And David Long Jr. was a vet rest. Um, so all of those guys did participate fully in practice today. Uh, Anthony Walker, I was actually surprised to see because there was a lot of speculation even by me and of other uh, Dolphins reporters that he was going to be a top candidate to go on the IR to begin the season, especially when we knew someone had to go on IR following Blake Ferguson's release. That way, you know, they go on IR, you bring him back, which we did. All right, so that's about all the good news I have really for y'all. Now it's time for the bad news. So you got your milk, you got your cookies. Now it's time to brush your teeth and go to bed. It... And this is this is a major blow, this first one. Jalen Ramsey has been dealing with a hamstring injury, and he has not participated either of the past two days. And our defensive coordinator, Weaver, he was talking to the media today, and he was praying and hopeful that Jalen Ramsey will play. But if not, it's going to be white boy Ethan Bonner uh, is probably going to end up starting opposite of Kendall Fuller. Wouldn't doubt Nick Needham gets elevated from the practice squad for this one. 
if that's the case with Ramsey possibly being out. And honestly, look, I do worry a little bit about the Jaguars' weapons. Like Christian Kirk, I'm, I feel confident Kendall Fuller can, you know, cover him. Uh, Evan Ingram, I feel confident in our safeties being able to cover him. It's Brian Thomas Jr. that's a little bit different. He has the size, he has the speed to really be able to outduel a lot of our corners besides Ramsey. Be he has, you know, he's six foot four, runs a four three. Like he is freakishly athletic. He is one guy that I was actually saying I think the Dolphins should try to draft. Him and Adnai Mitchell. But with that size and that speed, it makes him a real threat. Now, given we didn't really see too, too much from him in the preseason, so we don't know what we're going to get from him. But he's going to be the guy that I'm kind of going to worry about a little bit if uh, if Ramsey does miss time. Uh, it, even then, he's a rookie. It's his first game. I don't anticipate him doing too, too much in his very first game. Now, look, Puka did it last year it's been done before where wide receivers just go absolutely crazy their first week and then there's been justin jefferson where he was bad for his first four weeks and then turned into an absolute stud so hopefully it's the latter for brian thomas and he is bad for his first four weeks because honestly i'd rather rest ramsey a little bit this week and have him for wednesday against buffalo and even then it's like okay I kind of want him for the long run, and I don't want a soft tissue injury like a hamstring to really hamper his entire season. You really want to be careful with soft tissues, soft tissue injuries like this. Uh, so yeah, that's one thing. Another bad news uh, is Malik Washington has been on the uh, injury report the last two days, limited in both practices with a quad injury, and this is only really worrisome because. Of how little depth we actually have at wide receiver at the moment and his participation in this game is actually going to probably be crucial especially with his blocking ability on run plays if not I do anticipate to see a lot of Tanner Connor a lot of Jonu Smith a lot of Durham Smythe I anticipate to see a lot of that it's going to be cool to see uh, them get involved, but I do want Malik Washington to be healthy given this is also once again a soft tissue injury I don't want that to linger around um, Other than that injuries seem to be doing fairly well all around Like I said Aaron Brewer getting a little bit better Benito Jones also on the injury report He's been limited the last two days, uh, but he's been kind of banged up for a while I'm not sure exactly what his snap count is going to be Um I do anticipate Brandon Peely. Once again, we also have someone on the practice squad we can elevate uh, for this game. Um, so Brandon Peely, Deshaun Hand to probably take over that role in case he can't go. But being limited, I'm sure he's going to be good to go. Like I said, everybody else, I it's good to see. Uh, and then Jacksonville, their only injury, and literally their only injury is Daniel Thomas with an Achilles. He's been limited, so he's probably going to play. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Deuces.